Hi, it's Stuart McPhee here and I'm coming to you today from Shenzhen, China, where I'm uh, speaking at an event uh, this weekend and I'm very fortunate to be joined by a fellow speaker this weekend, Don Schellenberg. Don, thanks for uh, joining me today. Pleasure. Um, it's uh, great of you to give me your time um, today uh, before we both speak uh, tomorrow at the Expo. Just uh, thought I'd uh, ask you a few questions about your approach to the markets to try and help people out there, um, I guess, put together their own little piece, uh, their own puzzle to try the markets. Look, for those who have never heard of you before or have never heard you speak, would you mind just perhaps um, telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got interested in the markets and I guess the journey that you've uh, you've taken to get to this point here today? Yeah, it's been a bit of a journey, yeah, I admit that. Yes. Uh, some of my first adventures into the market were going back into the early 80s and uh, they didn't turn out too well. Okay. Yeah, like a lot of people, I, I hadn't had the opportunity or the inclination really to study much about investing and the different processes and the big books look pretty dry mm. and I avoided those. But I had some people who were insiders and in fact owned most of the shares in a couple of the companies in Canada where I'm, where I'm from. and. Uh, uh, that didn't turn out too well either, because that turned out uh, the fellow who, was, who owned the shares, he wanted to get people buying. So I don't know if they salted a gold mine to make it look very attractive and then release news. Mm -hmm. Said, Don, buy tomorrow morning. It's going to shoot up like crazy. You can make a ton of money. Well, in fact, it did shoot up, but he didn't say when to get out. Mm -hmm. The place to get out was when he had enough money to buy a new car or a new house, he stopped selling and then the shares plummeted way down below ground level. So after a period, uh, two or three experiences like that, I realized I needed more information, more education, and uh, began a process from there. Hmm. So that's a long time ago. You've obviously uh, learned a lot of things in that time. If you're talking early 1980s, you must have, uh, have you been through some times that have been very difficult and uh, times where you've thought, oh, this is not going to work out for me. I'm, you know, I'm not going to make this work and this is too difficult and more difficult than I thought. Or was there anything like that perhaps? I, I haven't traded constantly through, you know, since 1980. Hmm. Uh, in fact, probably being burned quite badly by the market uh, through my lack of knowledge. Um, I avoided the market for some time, but uh, always intrigued because of obviously the amount of money and uh, potential excitement and interest that, uh, that goes through this market constantly. Mm. My own personal interest is um, prime, I, like I'm of course asked to do analysis on all kinds of markets. Uh, my personal trad trading uh, interest is more in the Forex, the currency market, mm. uh, which of course is the largest, richest market in the world mm -hmm. and uh, moves very consistently with the methods that I, I apply. Funny you should say that and we're coming from China today was uh, you and I were talking this morning and said that because they can't short sell here China stocks a lot of them are very interested in Forex because of the ability to trade in both directions and that was something that really surprised me that um, and that's certainly your interest. Now tomorrow you're speaking about foreign exchange trading after me tomorrow and um, are you able to just share with us a little bit of the I guess the key points you'll be covering in your presentation tomorrow? Sure. Uh, my overall view of the market uh, uh, tries to incorporate several different uh, techniques, but I don't think anybody has succeeded in describing market movement uh, better than a gentleman who wrote his books about 70 years ago, and that is R. N. Eliot. Uh, a lot of people are intimidated by what they call the way principle, say it's far too difficult and not worthwhile. Mr. Elliot did not create the way markets move, but he did categorize it quite effectively. And I don't claim to have a total comprehension or, or that anybody does of what the market is or can do. But um, these various patterns that he described, and maybe a few more that we've added since then, uh, have been very capable of predicting uh, with high reliability many of the moves that take place in the market and that includes mm. in this incredible volatile time mm. and uh, irregardless of the time frame I apply Elliott concepts as well as uh, Fibonacci which is a, a measure that Mr. Elliott actually introduced okay. because his principle himself he could not make it 
uh, profitable for the first two years until he applied Fibonacci to a way of measuring how long a wave might be or how long a correction might be. Hmm. And so you've, uh, I guess, developed your own methodology using those tools to trade foreign exchange and that's worked out well for you. And um, well, that's fantastic because that's, uh, I guess, the position we all want to be in. That's uh, mm. discovering something that works for us. Um, a lot of the people um, you know, out there and the people we talk to at Expos, they're very focused and understandably so, they're very focused on entry and developing their methodology and their setups and their patterns and the like. Um, even though you and I know that whilst that's a critical part of developing an overall plan, there are more important things like how we manage our risk and the six inches between the ears. For those who are just entering the market and they're very focused on entry signal, do you have any comments or guidance on you know, where it sits so far as perspective and where it sits in priority, I guess, compared to other things? And any, I guess people are looking for that perfect setup. What's your guidance to people looking and trying to develop their own methodology with entry, I should say? Well, because of the Forex, which uh, one, these days one can choose the amount of leverage they want to trade with. When I first started trading, there was no choice. It was a standard size, which is 100 to 1 leverage. And uh, that can be very scary uh, until you've accum accumulated a lot of experience and confidence. Mm. Um, and probably because of that, I, I, I personally did and continue to do a lot of work on, on proper entry. Uh, because of the leverage, if you're not entering quite correctly, your risk can be outrageous. Uh, now, combining that, however, with, that, with the mental attitude, discipline, and proper risk management, I think you have a pretty good package. But to me, if you have ideal entry uh, and the other things then, uh, I, I think it puts you way ahead of the crowd, gives you a real trading edge. Okay, so I guess slightly different approach. If we develop a good sound methodology in entry, that can assist us with the other things like the discipline and, and the confidence to implement our plan rather than the other way around. Okay. One, one time a gentleman was showing me his trading method and we happened to be looking at a Forex chart. I said, well, where would you put the stop loss on your system? And he pointed at the chart and he said, sir, that is $10,000 away from current price. Well, that would be totally ludicrous mm. uh, to think you're going to be that far away. But that was what would be required by his plan. So uh, I, I've tried to get it as close as possible, I think, in order to minimize risk as part of the overall trading plan. Okay. More on entry and analysis. You've, you've spoken a little bit about Fibonacci and Elliott Wave and how that helps with uh, foreign exchange trading. Um, a hot topic, I guess, with our, with our blog and comments at the moment is technical indicators. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted your thoughts on, because obviously that can help people with entry. What are your thoughts on technical indicators? Have you used any yourself? Have you gone through a, a process of investigating what worked and what didn't work? And perhaps yeah. uh, comment on that. Well, maybe it's a bit of an exaggeration, but none of the indicators work. 